Hey, let's do some news of the day kind of stuff as it's Monday, so there's going to be a lot of stuff that's sort of uh, going on around the National Hockey League. Now, we're going to start off talking a little bit about the draft. So there's been a lot of talk about there being four or five really good draft picks that could all be excellent players, and everybody's kind of excited about the 2020 draft. That being said, Craig Button, uh, on his draft list, he has Yaroslav Askarov as the best goaltender entering the draft since Carey Price. He ranks him at number four. Now, I'm wearing Red Wings because I'm looking for teams that might be willing to take a shot at a goaltender at the number four spot if they draft there. In Detroit, if they draft at four, stranger things have happened. Need I remind people of Maurice Sider, who was expected to go later in the draft, and he went, no, I'll take him now. So, we'll see how it turns out, but it's interesting because HockeyProspect.com has them ranked at number three. Now, other websites have them rated 10 or lower. However, those, most of those ratings were done on Halloween or earlier. So it's quite possible that over the last month, his stock has been rising dramatically. And uh, a, a goaltender going that early in the draft, that would be very unusual. My guess is that when the draft actually happens, he probably falls to lower in the top 10. But the fact that we're talking about a goaltender being potentially drafted that early is very interesting. And there are some teams in the league that could definitely stand to have a starting goaltender. But if you're going to draft a goaltender early, you'd better already have that top prospect forward and defenseman because there's going to be some really good forwards and defensemen still available. That's part of the reason why goaltenders drop. Goaltenders also normally not ready for the NHL quite as quickly as defensemen and forwards. We'll see. Because again, if he's going to be drafted that early, he may very well be ready earlier than others. Uh, Dominic Roussel has been sent to the American Hockey League by Vancouver for a conditioning stint. He will be back up soon to play for the Canucks. And then we get into the whole roulette with the, the lineup and trying to figure out how to get everything under the cap and, and put the best team on the ice. For Vancouver, <clears throat> it's, it's crunch time, and we'll see how things shake out and who ends up on what line. Uh, Mitch Marner and Trevor Moore were skating before practice for the Toronto Maple Leafs, so... That's an encouraging sign that they're both skating. They're not at practice wearing contact jerseys yet, but, you know, baby steps. Uh, Victor Arvidsson, I've mentioned this in videos. I wanted this officially in a news video as well. Uh, he's out for four to six weeks for the Nashville Predators in 22 games this year. Six goals, nine assists for him. The six goals is a little bit low. That projects to just over 20, 20 goals. Last year he had, what, 34? And he projected for like 50. So Arvidsson hasn't really had the goal scoring season that one might have expected. But he was still putting up points. And somebody's going to have to make up for that somewhere in the Nashville lineup. As Nashville continues to go what they go through. Um, Gostas Bear will be a healthy scratch tonight for the Philadelphia Flyers against the Vancouver Canucks. It's an interesting one. Uh, if, if Ghost is on the outs with Philly, if Vino's decided he doesn't really like Ghost's game, I would think somebody would, would come knocking and, and, and ask about his availability. Because, again, the offensive side is there. It's just you wonder if, if he's peaked and if we're seeing him kind of on the downside right now. Because when he's been in the lineup, he hasn't been scoring either. So we'll see what happens with Ghost in, in Philly. And again, James Van Riemsdyk stands out as a guy who hasn't been scoring either, and his ice time's dropping. If you end up in the doghouse with Vino, it can be really tough to dig your way out of that. It really, really can. Also on Detroit Red Wing news, technically Detroit Red Wing news, since I can't claim, since I can't prove that the Red Wings are going to draft a highly thought of goaltender in the first round, I can say Philip Zadina. If you thought he looked tired last night or didn't look great. Yeah, that was his third game in three nights. He played in, played for Grand Rapids, Grand Rapids on Friday and Saturday, and he played for the Red Wings last night. So if he seemed a little bit out of sorts, I would imagine your third game in three days will do that to a person. And uh, kudos to him for saying, yeah, no, I'll go in the lineup. So for the Red Wings, again, you know, he's not going to make up for the loss of Mantha while he's out, but it, it is nice to see him at the NHL level at least getting that experience. Not all prospects come in and just take over the league. Sometimes it takes a while to figure it out. Uh, now, the, the, the news that's been making the rounds a lot over the last uh, day or so, I guess it was reported, I believe it was the Toronto Sun, that Mike Babcock goes to Mitch Marner. Not happy with your work right now. So what I want you to do, I got homework for you. I want you to make a list of who you think is the hardest working Maple Leaf and work it right down to who you think is the least hardworking and who needs to work harder. 
Um, and I want you to give me that list. So Mitch Marner being a rookie at the time, this was a 2016-2017 season, going, all right, well, fine, I can do that. And he, he made a list, and he had Kadri and Bozak towards the bottom of that list, meaning they don't work as hard as other guys. And Babcock got this list from Marner and then shared that information with his teammates, which infuriated the Toronto Maple Leafs with Babcock. And uh, this coming this coming out from a couple years ago, I'm wondering what else is going to come out. And honestly, that's a horrible thing to do to a kid. It's a horrible thing to do to a rookie to say, hey, can you, I, I cannot imagine any job I've had somebody saying, hey, can you rank which one of your coworkers is the hardest working and then which one's the laziest? And if you actually come up with that list, them then sharing it with your coworkers, yeah, good luck working with them. Uh, it, it's it's a horrible thing to do, and I'm not even sure what that accomplishes. I, I don't understand giving a professional hockey player homework like that. The homework should be, you know, practice, work on work on your edge work. Uh, we notice that your compete level's a little bit off lately, so we want you to work in the corners. Uh, here's here's the strength and conditioning coach. We're going to get to work with him. That's the kind of homework you want for kids. That's the kind of homework that, that Maple Leafs players should be doing. Not, not making a list of who's lazy. I don't know, coach. You're the guy in charge. You tell me. That's what, <laughs> that's what he could have wrote on a piece of paper. I don't know. You're the genius. Uh, so I think there's going to be a lot of stories coming out from Toronto. There's been stories about things he did when he was in Detroit. And we all know that Mike Commodore has a lot of stories. I've heard 90% of the Leafs were happy to see him go. I've heard 95% of the Leafs were happy to see him go. And I, I think at the end of the day, John Tavares, there was there was video that came out of him after the win in Arizona that this is the start of a new whole new start for us. And it'll be interesting to see how far it goes. It'll be interesting to see just how how many they can win because Toronto's coming off of three straight pretty darn good seasons and honestly they've just been in a complete and total funk so far until Keith took took over so we'll see whether or not more comes out of the Babcock uh, coaching reign that we didn't know about and the thing I'm wondering is now if, if you if, if you're Kyle Dubas and you know that Babcock did this or if you're Lou Lamorello at the time and you knew that that Babcock did this why was he still there I, and I'm, I'm saying that because that's the kind of thing a coach can do that I could see that losing the locker room. Where the locker room's like, all right, well, we'll all talk together. Forget coach. You know what? Screw him. See what he did to Mitch? Just screw him. No, we're not talking to the coach. We'll just talk amongst ourselves. And you'll end up with situations where the, the locker room really just doesn't want the coach having anything to do with any of it. And it is quite possible that that was part of it. And there are rumors that he had in Detroit. Somebody make a list along that exact same line and, and then leaked those results to the teammates. Just what do you, why do you do that? Why do you go to Nazem Kadri and say, hey, so Marner says you're lazy. What are you doing? Hey, Bozak, Marner says you're lazy. Why? And and not only that, but you're, you're, you're making this kid make a list and it may just have been whatever. Like for me, and again, I'm just speaking for myself, I, I would not... Because of the fact that you put your, your, your name on that or you, you do that, you turn that in. Yeah, that can get used against you. I, w I wouldn't do it. But again, I'm not, a, I'm not a professional hockey player in their first year trying to stay with the Toronto Maple Leafs. He may have looked at the situation and gone, here's a coach who's making money for the next eight years. He's, he's here for good. If I make him angry, I could end up somewhere else. I could end up back in juniors. I could end up being traded. I could end up being at it. He could go to the general manager, and next thing you know, I'm the one that's the troublemaker. So it, it really left Marner in a really, really bad position. What a terrible thing to do if this is accurate. Apparently it happened, too, during the, the, the father's trip. So all the talk during the summer about Mitch Marner's dad and all this, and all oh, the Leafs got robbed. Maybe part of Marner's contract negotiation was, if I have to work for this prick, you guys are paying me. If this guy's going to stick around, I don't really like working for him. You guys are paying me through the nose. It is possible. Think about it. That some of these guys that didn't give Toronto a discount, it was because, well, look who's behind the bench. Yeah, I'm not giving you guys a discount to play, play for him. I'm not going to make him look smarter by leaving a whole bunch of cap room and you know i don't i don't really want to be there because again 
when we talk about players wanting to play in certain places, weather and climate is part of it. I know that's weird. I know people in Winnipeg don't like it, but it seems to be part of it. That not just taxes, but they go, you know, it's really nice in California. It's really nice in Florida. Kind of nice to live there. And you, you do have taxes that come into it. And I, I do think that management, the direction of the team, and the coach, I think all of these things come into uh, in, into the whole mindset for a player when they're a free agent or when they're going to sign a contract extension. Do I want to play for this coach? Do I want to be here? Which is why Bobrovsky and Columbus should have been traded before the deadline when you think back to it. And the fact that clearly there was a disconnect between Bobrovsky and Tortorella. Anyways, what else will surface? Let me know what you guys think. And then the last thing I want to talk about is Brad Marchand. I can't win with Brad Marchand. Here's why. Brad Marchand does something stupid against Minnesota. Yep. Should he have been suspended? Probably. Does he get suspended? Regularly. He also gets a lot of penalties. And Marchand does stupid things, usually when, Toronto, when, or when Boston's losing. So if Boston's behind in a game, keep an eye on him. If Boston's melting down in a game, keep an eye on him. But I can't win. Because right away people go, well, Shannon's a Bruins fan. So if if he makes an argument that a play's not really bad, uh, well, he's a Bruins fan, so what does he know? And then if I make an argument that, oh, that play was terrible, people will go, he's just overcompensating. He doesn't believe that because he's a Bruins fan. I've had people ask, how can you cheer for the Bruins when they have Marshawn? I, I don't know. How do people cheer for teams with McSorley on them? It happened. Uh, there have been players I didn't like in Vancouver. I still cheered for the Canucks, even while they had players I didn't like. <clears throat> Marshawn is the most frustrating player in the National Hockey League because he is one of the most offensively gifted um, players in the NHL. He is also one of the most gifted at being offensive. And that's that's the problem. Those are two completely different things. Offenses in both. One of them means scoring on the ice, and the other one means uh, ticking people off off the ice, and sometimes with your actions on the ice. And, you know, I, I, I can't speak to NHL player safety. I know that he has been suspended for incidents in the past. I know there's other things he hasn't been suspended for. And, yeah, I, I can't win. That's why I don't really report on it, and I try to stay out of it, because I, I can't win. He's a fantastically talented player. He is one of the best point producers in the National Hockey League. He is also one of the most divisive players in the National Hockey League. And his conduct is uh, is ridiculous. It really is. To the point where I've seen other Boston Bruins players go up to him and tell him to knock it off. I've seen Chara do it. I've seen Bergeron do it. I've seen Pasternak do it. Where it's like, hey, no, I've seen coaches go over to him, settle down, knock it off. So the fact that his own teammates, rather than coming to his defense, will go to him and say, listen, you need to cut it out. That says a lot about just how over the line he can go. And it can be a distraction, and it can cost the team games. And it has cost the team games. I've watched it happen. Where they're winning, or they're in a tie situation, and he does something stupid, and it's like, what are you doing and the next thing you know, they've lost the game because he distracts them as much as he distracts the opposition. But, again, I know uh, I'm in a can't-win situation because people know I cheer for the Boston Bruins. And that's just that's something that until the day he retires, and according to his current points production and his age, that's going to be many years to come uh, until, he, until he retires or until the Bruins trade him, which, again, with his points production, that's not going to happen. Um... It's, it's something that I'm I'm going to be dealing with for, for years. But it's all right. It's not a big deal. Thank you guys so much for supporting me along the way, getting me here. Almost 128,000 subscribers. Very, very close today. Very, very close. I think we were 20 away the last time I looked. And uh, we'll, we'll see uh, how much further things can grow. Keep in mind that we do have two trips planned, one to uh, Anaheim slash Disneyland. And then we are going to be going to Vegas again in March. And I'm already looking ahead to next year. And looking at all those empty seats in Florida, I had the thought last night of next year it should be Florida. We could totally do a trip to Florida, and I could see a couple of home games for the Panthers. That would probably be pretty fun. I've definitely got the jerseys for it, and that would probably be a fun trip. So just, just throwing that out there. Thank you guys so much for all your support. Do hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. I will talk to you again soon.